The expansion of London's ULES, the Ultra Low Emission Zone, led by Sadiq Khan, it came into effect last year. And I remember on the first day it came into effect, I was due in London, and there was a tube strike and a train strike on the same day, making travel almost impossible. And it, uh, ULES aims to reduce air pollution across the capital, but it's uh, effectiveness has been called into question. A Bromley Council report found no overall lowering in pollution following the expansion with nitrogen dioxide levels actually increasing in some areas. Khan's administration, however, has claimed success in reducing emissions by 22% in outer London. And this discrepancy invites scrutiny about the broader implications of the scheme and the complexities surrounding environmental policies, particularly when tied to political un uh, leadership. And Salik Khan's decision to expand ULES across outer London was grounded in public health concerns, particularly the estimated 4,000 annual premature deaths attributed to air pollution in the city. And while the intent is unquestionably noble and aimed at tackling the toxic air problem, the reality of its execution has proven to be significantly more complex and complicated. And the Bromley Council report is particularly damning, showing an increase in pollutants post-expansion. Now, some people may attribute this to seasonal weather changes, but the data shows that pollution was still higher in comparison to the same months in 2022. So the report's findings that pollution levels were possibly artificially low in 2022 due to COVID restrictions highlights a broader issue of air quality measurement during such an abnormal period. But nevertheless, critics such as Bromley councillor Simon Forthorpe argues that the ULES expansion is not a genuine environmental effort, but a tax grab disguised as climate change action. And Forthorpe's uh, argument reflects a broader sense of public distrust in the scheme's effectiveness. ULES is perceived by many as a disproportionately um, aggressive scheme that affects low-income Londoners who rely on older vehicles in areas with poor public transport infrastructure. And this raises the questions of equity and environmental policies, suggesting that ULES, while well-intentioned, exacerbates economic inequalities. It doesn't help people. The political dimension here cannot be overlooked. Khan faces a delicate balance between environmental responsibility and political expediency. And while the mayor's office maintains that ULES is reducing emissions and contributing to better air quality, public opposition, particularly in outer boroughs like Bromley, shows a clear disconnect between the city hall's messaging and local realities. And now there's evidence. Furthermore, the critique of studies used to justify ULES expansion, including the alleged conflicts of interest in peer reviews, erodes trust in the administration's claims of success. In parallel to concerns about outdoor air pollution, there's glowing and there's uh, growing alarm about the dangers of air air, air quality uh, within London underground within the tube, particularly the concentration of PM2.5 particles. And a University of Cambridge study highlighted the presence of iron oxide particles, notably uh, magmite, in the, underground, in the underground, which can enter the lungs and bloodstream. And these findings uh, are concerning. It's not entirely clear that they establish a direct health risk, but they don't sound positive, do they? The lack of ventilation on deeper lines like the Victoria and Northern lines means dust particles linger for longer and exacerbate potential exposure. But it's crucial to contextualise these concerns. Tube journeys are typically shorter in duration compared to other forms of commuting, such as driving, cycling or walking through congested roads. Uh, and while PM 2.5 concentrations may be higher underground and significantly higher. Road users face exposure to vehicle exhaust and nitrous oxide, pollutants also linked to significant health risks. Therefore, while underground air pollution is a problem, it's not necessarily more dangerous than other transport options in London. The question of exposure time 
needs to be factored into the equation, which complicates the simplistic narrative that the underground is dramatically worse than the roads above. The Transport for London's efforts to reduce dust levels, as uh, such as increased tunnel cleaning and the introduction of platform screen doors, shows a proactive approach to addressing the problem, but as research continues, it remains essential for Transport for London to balance immediate solutions with long-term policy goals to mitigate the risks. Both the ULEZ expansion and concerns about the air quality of the tube illustrate the complexity of addressing air pollution in London, and Khan's ULEZ initiative, while progressive, has faced valid criticism regarding its effectiveness and its fairness. And meanwhile, the challenges of air quality in the underground pose a more insidious problem and are something which seems to have been overlooked, particularly due to the lack of immediate health data linking uh, magmite exposure to concrete health issues. My own instinct is that this is a problem. The lesson here is that policies aimed at improving environmental health must not only be grounded in rigorous, transparent science, but also sensitive to socio-economic inequalities. And without such considerations, well-meaning policies risk alienating the very people they aim to protect. Both ULEZ and the issues in the tube highlight the delicate balancing act between ambition and practicality in environmental governance.